Not so long ago, I had a conversation with the artist who was hired to illustrate the four-part graphic novel miniseries London Gothic. His name's Mike Burton and this is what he had to say about his own artistic origins as well as his involvement with this Victorian adventure. So the first question I'd probably like to ask you would be, how would you describe London Gothic? How would you define it? Okay, so uh, London Gothic is a horror action mystery story uh, set in Victorian London. Um, it uh, follows uh, our two main characters, uh, the Duke, um, Henry de Montford and uh, Jellicoe. Uh, the Duke is a um, uh, part of a, an organisation called the Tutori, who are an offshoot of the Knights Templar, and their job is to protect uh, these holy relics from uh, demonic entities that want to steal them. Um, the Duke's, uh, uh, sorry, the Jellico is a um, expert knuckle fighter, and um, they oh, try to keep the London streets uh, clean of uh, these uh, demons and not let the public know what's happening. Um, and the uh, the main bad guy is uh, Lord Phineas Cromwell, and he's after these relics because he wants to raise hell on earth. How did you first get involved in this co uh, comic book, this project? How did you and Mike first meet? And then the evolution of let's do a comic. Oh, well, so um, originally Nick just uh, so Nick cre created this story, or he was in the process of starting to create this story, and um, he uh, met up with an artist uh, called Sean, and um, they did some sort of initial ideas for it. Um, and unfortunately, he wasn't able to commit the time to do the full project, so uh, Nick decided to post it on a website called Upwork, um, and I just oh. happened to come across it. Uh, and it was uh, the initial uh, uh, premise that he put down was very brief, mm. but um, it was uh, he said it was horror and it was set in Victorian times. And I love the Victorian era, like uh, the clothes and the style and the atmosphere and things like that and the architecture. And so um, I thought oh, I'd, I'd really I'd really like to be a part of this. Um, so he'd, he'd put on it. To, he said um, for artists to do a panel for him of uh, Jack the Ripper fighting a demon. Okay actually uh which jack the ripper doesn't appear in the story but it was just to get an idea of sort of uh you know what the, the artist would come up with and uh i thought well i'd been i'd been made redundant at the time and i was like right well i want this job so instead of doing one panel i did a, an entire page and made it into a little short story oh uh, brilliant yeah, so I had it. So it was there. Uh, he was in a graveyard and he was fighting this demon that almost looked like a, an alien. I wanted to kind of look a little bit different from what you'd normally expect from a demon because, um, like, uh, videos of skinwalkers or or like aliens and things like that. I wanted it to be sort of such that you know these demons perhaps uh, they're these things we've heard of or we've seen little snippets of throughout history, but we, you know people have misinterpreted what they actually are. Uh, so he, he was fighting, I, I didn't fight him with this demon. And then at the end, he sort of uh, finishes the demon off and the demon's got its claw on his face. And then the next panel is uh, a woman with her hand on his face saying thank you. And so um, it was just to take that little premise and have a little story in this to make you think, oh, well, maybe these people were possessed and that's why he was doing what he was doing and things like that. Um, and Nick obviously liked it. And then... Um, uh, we decided we'd go ahead together and then we started to work on character designs and and then we went into full production on the first chapter yeah what well, are your, your artistic origins well um i just i started drawing from like as soon as i could hold a pencil really um and uh hmm. my mum my mum saw that you know like she'd say draw a sheep and it kind of looked like a sheep you know and she thought well um you know maybe he's got maybe he's got some talent in it. Um, and my mum was a cartoonist briefly. Oh, like, wow. she, never, she never actually did it professionally. Um, she did go on to be a makeup artist, um, but she never did cartooning professionally, but it was a big hobby of hers. Um, so she sort of got me to start drawing. And then dad was a massive comic book fan, like huge comic book fan. So he had like a collection of 12,000 comic books in the house at any one time. So every night, you know, I could read a different comic book. Uh, and that's how I learned to draw. I, I just, I copy the, copy the uh, superheroes. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just did that for a long time. And then um, I, I went at college, I did multimedia. So I got to do animation, uh, movie production and uh, you know design work and then um, I also I did a lot of freelance illustrator work um, and design work uh, which I think all sort of 
helps to go into London Gothic because um, mm -hmm. uh, I do use a lot of stuff uh, like multimedia type things in the art as opposed to just uh, pencils, inks and flat colours. And, uh, I, I must ask, what type of comics did your dad read and what were the ones that stood out for you? Uh, so, Well, it was American American superhero comics mostly, Marvel yeah. and DC is what my dad used to. Any any particular characters, any particular titles? Or? Uh, well, uh, the, the you know the, the main ones really: Avengers, um, uh, X Men, Fantastic Four, Spider Man. Spider Man was a big one for me. I used to love Spider Man as a kid. He was uh, my favourite character. I used to you know watch all the uh, TV shows and uh, mm -hmm. things like that. So, but yeah, it was uh, those mostly. Some DC stuff. I did like Batman. Uh, I used to like reading his Batman comics. In fact, one of them, I can't even remember which one it is, but it's uh, my favourite comic book of all time. I think, it, I, might, I might be getting it mixed up. It might be the, the one with the Todd McFarlane cover where he's holding that woman and she's got the big cape. He's got the big cape. I mean, it's Todd McFarlane. McFarlane, of course, is a massive cape. <laughs> but um, I think it was like the whole story was just that uh, it was just Batman trying to talk a woman down who was stood on a bridge and she she wanted to end her life and, and Batman was just, it was just talking her down. And that was the comic book that i read when i realized oh comic books can the stories can be something that's quite emotional and quite mature like not i mean a lot of people sort of cite things like dark night returns when when comic books sort of start to get more dark and gritty and and, and in the mainstream at least um but like i think be, you know being adult and being and being telling a story that's you know, it does not necessarily about violence or things like that, but like that, because it had an emotional effect on me. Uh, I must have read that comic book. Like it was dog-eared, the the, <laughs> the, the copper hair, because I, I read it through so many times because it, it, I went on this emotional journey with it. And I thought, well, if, you know, if you can do that with art, you know, and, and it can mm -hmm. it can really portray that sort of idea to someone, you know, that's that, I think that's when I decided that's what I want to do um, with my life. Is there any artist that you've, try to imitate in your work or you found you like their work but maybe that it's not you're not derivative well <laughs> well i mean neil adams like he's he's my my, my favorite Ooh. artist i love neil adams may he rest in peace yeah um mm. it is just uh, incredible i mean I, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of greats for, for for different reasons but what i really loved about neil adams was um uh, that he did very realistic um, depictions of characters. Um, Alex Ross as well, massive fan of Alex Ross. I love oh. uh, his. Uh, I mean, just he, I, I particularly also like his, uh, his, his when he does pencils and inks. Um, uh, you know, they're they're fantastic as well, and it, it's almost like a completely different style. But you can sort of tell it's him. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I do, I do sort of lean more towards the sort of realistic as opposed to the, the more sort of cartoony. Uh. Um, and, and you get the people in between. But then again, you, you know, I, I, um, um, I do like um, uh, oh, I John Romita Jr. Uh, I, I like him. Uh, I mean, but he is cartoony. But I really do like John Romita Jr.'s work as well. So I, I think there's, you know, it depends on what, what they're doing, I think. Um, you know, well, like with, with Spider-Man, I think, you know, uh, Romita's fantastic, you know. So... Yeah, they're they're, they're uh, but I, I I don't I don't know necessarily whether or not they've they've influenced me that much. Um, I'd I'd love to be able to draw like Neil Adams though. If, if I could click my fingers and then just draw like Neil Adams, I just yeah immediately yeah <laughs> my style could go. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> One of the books I had as a kid was How to Draw the the Marvel Way, and I used to work through that like just constantly. Um, and it would talk about having these dynamic poses, and then a lot of manga seems to be like almost. The extreme extension of that, the furthest you can go to push and warp the human body uh, to make these perspectives. And, and like, I try to bring some of that into my way where I can. Um, uh, but, it, you know, they're, they're the masters at <laughs> doing those sort of things. So, yeah. But, yeah, there's, there's something there's something good in, in everything, really. Did you have any visual inspirations for like, London Gothic? The first thing I noticed about it was the colouring. Colouring was very atmospheric. It was very dense. It was very in some cases, overly dramatic. Did you do much research into Vic the architecture of Victorian London? Were there um, films that inspired the designs of certain characters? Come about when, like when you came down to design the Duke, for instance, was there someone in, you had in mind? Um, I'm not sure if there was someone exactly that I, I had in mind. I think it's, it's interesting because I think um, there's been... 
elements of the designs of the characters that have been in my head for so long, I, I'm not even sure where they originally came from. For example, like before I even started work on London Gothic, I was putting together a steampunk outfit that wasn't dissimilar from what the Duke actually wears. So there, there was a, obviously there was a there was a steampunk aspect to it that was influencing mm-hmm. it. We did we did do a lot of research uh, for whatever photographs we could find and drawings, things like architecture. We really wanted to capture. Uh, that essence of of like Victorian London, and one of the main reasons for the for the colouring um, was we wanted to sort of get like everything was misty and foggy, and it was like uh, candlelight and gas lamps and things like that. We wanted to get that sort of um, you know like sort of um, diffused lighting across things, um, so it so it made the the actual environment uh, feel more alive and get, have that atmosphere to it. For the for the costumes, we looked into certain things, but I mean, I've, there's been so many things that have influenced me. Even things like the Assassin's Creed games, uh, I love the like the sort of designs in that because it's this almost sort of you could almost get away with wearing it, or it's almost you know it's a <laughs> costume, it's an outfit, but but you can it, you know it's stylized, but only to a certain point. For uh, the Duke specifically, um, he does have like so his jacket has a, a red. Uh, part across here and his shirt has a, a red lining down the front yeah so there's there's certain elements uh in that sense uh that there's we wanted to bring in a couple of things for certain characters uh but yeah it's, it's hard to pinpoint exact things because like i say i've been thinking about I've, I've been wanting to do a comic book set in victorian london for years what's, what's in, uh, drawing you to victorian london is it a, is it a visual thing is it some piece of history that you've read about or well, I think uh, from being young, I was uh, I really liked Sherlock Holmes, um, so mm. I think that was a big part of it. Um, but I don't, I'm not quite sure. I I loved, I just loved the the era of you know men in top hats and wearing full suits, <laughs> like just like you know, the amount of effort that they sort of went to just to walk down to the shop. You know, I just I can, there's something about it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just something about that. It's like yeah. there's no need, is there? But it looks great, you know. I mean, I wouldn't want to live in the Victorian era because <laughs> no, I don't think anyone would. No, no, even I mean, even if you were sort of well off, I think you, you know there was, uh, there was a few issues. But yeah, and but mostly it's the architecture. I think if I'd not have gone into art uh, or been a comic book artist, I would have wanted to be an architect because I love architecture. So and the, all the old buildings and even just the, even the sewers, like seeing how you know intricate they are, and uh, yeah, what could have been inspirations if you could. In the in, in like the ideal world, you had you had the money and you had the script, and you had everything behind you. And you wanted, you could cast London Gothic as a film. Who would you have playing? Let's say five of the the, the five main principal characters. So who would you see playing the Duke? Would you see playing Jet Jellico? Who would you see playing? Um, um, so I think I mean we discussed this. Me, uh, me and Nico yeah. discussed this. I I think Luke Evans for the Duke would be good. Um, okay. I think <laughs> Jellico. I am not sure, but I'm pretty sure Nick thinks Jack Black could do a Jellico. But I'm not sure. <laughs> but, We're not but, sure. I, I, I don't think he could do an Irish accent, though. That's the thing. We'd have That's to. We'd have to I, hear can, it. I can see that visually. I can see Jack Black, but yeah. could he do an Irish accent? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, now Phineas. I mean, I tell you, I'd love to play Phineas, Mark Strong. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, he's a great actor. Um, uh, oh, who else? So, Punch. Uh, mm. I mean, I, I think uh, that'd be Andy Circus because he can do those type of characters. He's amazing at portraying sort of demonic or, you know, like creatures. Like, yeah, I think Andy Circus. Who else? Honora? I'm not sure. I it's okay to, to be continued. If anyone's yeah. <laughs> read, if anyone's read London Gothic, stick a message. I'll in tell you what. Comment. Tell you, my girlfriend. My girlfriend. Uh, Becky. That's it. Because <laughs> multiple people have said to have said to me, bear it in mind. I started drawing it and I designed Honora before I even met her. Uh, people have said, <laughs> oh wow. People have said, yeah. People have said, you put you put Becky in as uh, Honora, didn't you? I was like, no, <laughs> no, no. So to end on, what's next for? you yourself and the Nerd of London Gothic. When will it come out next? 
um, where can people pick it up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just just to prove, look here it is, isn't it lovely? It's bigger than my head. It's lovely. <laughs> Yeah, so at the moment, it's um, chapter one is available uh, on London um, hyphen gothic dot co dot uk. Can be ordered there. Uh, yeah, there's a digital version. Uh, you can uh, there's a free twenty pages preview uh, if you want to check that out and read through it. See if you like it. There's uh, printed copies. Um, we do send them internationally. Um, we've just managed to uh, we've arranged with a distributor in America. So because originally the postage was ridiculous to America, but now we've been able to bring that. Uh, way down so it's much more affordable now uh, so next is uh, chapter two which i'm currently working on um i'm getting cl uh, close to completing chapter two so very shortly we're going to probably do a second uh kickstarter so we're going to do the pre-launch for that quite soon so um uh yeah people will be able to pre-order and there's some pre-order bonuses um loads of different things even appearing as a character in the in oh. the comic yeah so we did that for the first one and we also did a competition just be, uh, before we did the kickstarter for someone and they got to have their likeness in and if you do you get a, a print uh, a special signed print of the of the page that you know you appear in um so th there's that coming up so that'll be chapter two so there's four chapters in total uh, they will all be done, regardless of whether or not we you know, uh, hit the kickstart goals and things like that. So they're all coming out. Uh, after that, uh, we are looking at potentially, maybe not necessarily after that, but at some point um, we're in talks with a few people, some other artists to do a um, some origin stories of some of the individual uh -huh. characters. Um, so, yeah, hopefully those will be coming out. Um, and we've got a few other projects, but we're focusing on London Gothic at the moment, so to get that completed. And on that note, I'd like to thank Mike for telling us about himself as well as the graphic novel, London Gothic, before encouraging you to click on one of the links in the description to find out more.